Welcome to the Ready to Love Season 3, Episode 5 Review. This is Couples Couch with Pat. And I'm Cam. Let's get into this week's episode. We are totally new to this review uh, or to, to this the show. show. Like, we're literally just jumping on the bandwagon in the middle of everything going on. Trying to catch up. Trying to catch up, but I think we're caught up. We are now ready to review episode five. This show is actually very interesting. Yeah. And drop in the comment section for me. The host of the show is Tommy Miles. I did not do any research, so that's my own fault. But is this nephew Tommy yes. that was on the Steve Harvey show? Oh, it is? Yes. Okay, so I was like, he sound like him, but I've never really seen him. So I was like, away from the nephew. so that's why they're just going by Tommy. Because I'm like, what a nephew okay. at? Okay, so this is nephew Tommy, but we're, we're going to call him Tommy, you know? Okay. Just like Lil Bow Wow. We're not calling him Lil no more. Just Bow Wow. Uh, is anybody still calling him <laughs> Bow Wow? <at all? laughs> I don't know. So let's get into this week's episode. But before we get into episode five, let's recap what happened in episode four really quick. And this is really just for me. Because <laughs> I know y'all already saw what happened in episode four. But because I'm so new to the show, I just want to just throw this one little gem out there. But this is going to be super high level. This is like a spaceship Matter of fact, this is past spaceship. Like, what's next after space overview? Heaven? Okay, this is a high heaven <laughs> overview. <laughs> Let's get into it. And I'm going to sit here like a kid that was supposed to read a book last night, but surely did he not. He didn't do the pre-work, y'all. So The draft was on, man. I watched <laughs> snippets. Okay. So, in episode four, uh, the ladies came together to eliminate Troy because he was being disingenuous by telling all the ladies that they were his number one. Apparently they all figured him out. Troy was acting like he was at the players club, walking around, giving everybody uh, kisses on the cheek and telling everybody they think he's number one. I seen that dude somewhere, I'm telling you. And he does look kind of that familiar. That dude looks he so really familiar. Does. That is it for the episode four recap. That's what I got out of that show. So let's jump into episode five now. Troy was out here acting like a super spreader for the COVID, kissing everybody <laughs> on the cheek, bro. <laughs> you was. can't go and kiss everybody <laughs> on the cheek in everybody. front of everybody else. <laughs> it's not how this like, works. come on, bro. It's not how any of this is supposed Boy, to you work. my number one. <laughs> What you my number one. What you my number one. Blessed people like the Pope. Yeah, <laughs> all y'all tied for number one. I you gotta go, bro. I couldn't do you gotta go. Sure. But he was so entertaining with it. Okay. He ain't never been put in a situation where he was like he had some that dude in him. Yeah, but like I think that's pick, what, yeah. And he didn't know how to handle it. He was like, Oh, you like me? Yeah. Like, Come here, girl. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And he didn't take none of the signs. Like, she's like, oh, okay. Yeah, she's like, oh, I was feeling it. Uh, he, go get he was just happy to be in a place, like you said, where everybody was potentially yeah, like, going to like him. He like was him. a cool kid in school. Yeah. He ate it up for yeah. that. But I'm telling you, for that little bit of time, uh -huh. Troy had the time of his life. He did. Now he can die easy. <laughs> now nah, he going he to go searching for that the rest of his life. All right, let's get into episode five. All right. Like I said before, if you are new to Couples Couch, we give high-level overviews. We don't get into the nitty-gritty details of everything that happened in the show, just what's important to the storyline of the couples. So let's get into it. So the show opens up with the um, women having the power last week to eliminate. Now this week the show opens up with the men going to the gentlemen's lounge to meet up with Tommy. Yeah. Um, this is where he tells them that this week they have the power to eliminate um, a woman or two or so women. Uh, Tommy is setting up the guys and the ladies to go out for a masquerade ball this week. Uh, David said that he typically uh, goes out to events that require him to dress up. So he takes that into account when he's choosing a lady. I was like, who really says that though? Like, you, this is... <laughs> Like, I don't Nobody. Know what he was thinking about. I'm like, okay, so you typically try to find someone that can dress up all the time. I don't know. That was just. I a think weird he just statement. means he he takes in consideration like he needs their style. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you might have a girl that's cute, 
she's maybe a tomboy. Like she doesn't dress up or okay. wear dresses all the time. Yeah, but she can. Yeah, yeah she but can you, go so you, from but that. you never see it though. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. I'm th- I think that's what he's saying. Like okay. somebody that can pow like that. Okay, that was pretty much it for that scene. Mm. Let's move on to the next scene. Next scene shows that Kyra, Jason, Alexis, and AJ go out for an ice skating date. None of them can truly ice skate. I think Kyra kind of had it up for a second there, but then she kind of lost it. (laughs) Um, So then Kyra and AJ have a moment to talk. AJ says that Kyra is one of her top people that he's trying to know. Uh, Kyra thinks that once AJ lets down that uh, BS kind of persona, they may can have something there. In the meantime, Alexis and Jason are off to the side, um, kind of ice skating together. Um, and we do remember that Jason used to be, or is still, I'm not sure, uh, her son's coach. So she knew him before she started this season. He used to be her son's coach, or still is, or something. So anyway... They're having a date, and Jason tells Alexis that he's really having a hard time seeing past her just being the parent, like, you know, for one of his kids that he coaches. Right. Um, he says he doesn't really see her as somebody that he can be intimate with. Um, Alexis says that she is disappointed um, that he doesn't see her in that light, but um, Alexis tells Jason that, you know, you should go ahead and go after the one that you want because I already know who it is. And I was like, okay, why you got to say it salty like that? You know what I mean? Because, I don't know. I I like the premise of the show, but right. I, it couldn't be me. Yeah, it's just too close to home for everybody to be like mingling Day, and everybody yeah, to have interest in everybody. And then you don't know who really is feeling who more. And then it's like they boom, shock you with the, you, you're not ready to love. So it's like, yeah. It's, it is kind of hard to see everybody, to see who your competition is. You know what I mean? I don't want no competition. I think the only good thing, too, is that they don't live in the house. You know how some shows try to put everybody to live in the house together? Yeah, they meet up for dates they just and stuff. Meet up so for I, dates. I like I that part I guess it's of it. cool because it's not like they're involved, involved. They're just dating. Yeah. But so. it's still hard to see. Like, when you're dating... And y'all aren't exclusive. You know she might be dating other people, but you don't have to go see it. Right. Like, this is you know in your face. Like, and then for her to tell, oh, you're my number two. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is. That's... Number two pays for her meal. <laughs> Next scene shows Stacy showing up to Ron's house for a one-on-one date. Stacy said she's been divorced for four years now and hasn't been ready to date um, again until just now. She said she's interested in having a partner that can be there for her. Ron says he knows that Chrysanthemum and Stacy are like this, and they consider themselves as freaking frack. So, the last freaking frack that I saw on TV was Portia and and Phaedra on Real Housewives of Atlanta, and that didn't work out very well at the end. So I'm hoping that they have a better. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking friend. about, but I, know, I hope so. I know, it's Real Housewives of Atlanta stuff, but I know some of my my subscribers would know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. That freaking frack relationship never really worked out too tough. But uh, anyway, I digress. Somebody come in between. <laughs> exactly, and that's what happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so Ron says he knows Chrysanthemum and Stacy are freaking frack and that they're really close. So Stacy said she was at Chrysanthemum's house the other day and they both realized they both have an interest in Ron. So she puts him like right there on the front street in a hot spot. Like, so who do you like better? Like, who's who's your real number one? Like, everybody can't be a number one. Um, except they've been in kind of, she's been my top since uh-huh. coming to the beginning. You know, who's your number one? Everybody can't be your number one. And, you know, immediately it just came off. Unless you're Troy. <laughs> You see where that got him. And so it just got awkward for him. And he was like, well, I'm going to choose Chrysanthemum because you put me on the spot. And I do have a better connection with her than anybody else. So And they started talking about all the, you know, traveling, this, and the three kids. <laughs> that Chrysanthemum doesn't have. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So you can tell in her face she felt some kind of way, you know. So well, don't ask for the truth when you don't want it. Yeah, Ron said that he'd been feeling chrysanthemum you know, from day one. Yeah, she's been in his top since the beginning. So that was pretty much it for that scene. Let's move on to the next scene. Chris and Amber link up for a date. So Amber shows up to, I guess it's a spa or I don't know, it's giving backyard vibes 
for me. I don't know where they're at, but she shows up. Today, and- you're in a backyard. <laughs> <laughs> they show up and begin meditating in this backyard. And I can't even really focus on what they're saying because Chris looks like Puma to me from Black Ink Crew, New York. <laughs> Tell me he don't look like Puma. He even sounds like Puma. I'm like, if this ain't Puma reincarnated while he's still alive, like, I don't <laughs> get Boy, it. That chicken on the floor. <laughs> Where she's at the body slam. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I'm well, sorry. Okay. You almost came off the stool. That's my favorite show, actually. So, yeah, I was like, yo, he looks just like Puma. Tell me he don't look like Puma, y'all. I know y'all agree. If you watch Black Ink Crew New York. He got some Puma vibe, too. He definitely giving Puma vibes. So, anyways, they are meditating. Today is great. Today, you're, you was smart. You was intelligent. <laughs> you was... <laughs> Sorry. And, um... So then she comes, you know, so they're meditating. And the other thing that threw me off is that I don't know if she knew she was coming to meditate in the grass, but she had on like a sweater, sweater dress. dress. And I was like, this is definitely not the attire that you wear to meditate. She, like, got, a, she got a stiff breeze coming through. You really should have on some Fabletics or something. <laughs> like, I'm just you and your saying. Fabletics. I love Fabletics. Anyway, me too. so. Um, Once they're done meditating, they go back to like a little table to just, you know, chat and chop it up or whatever. And um, Amber asks Chris, what is his thoughts on marriage? And he, Chris says, if someone wants to get married, he's like, all right, well, let's get married. But that's not like his ultimate goal in a relationship. Like he's just open to having a long term relationship. It doesn't necessarily have to end in marriage or begin in marriage. (laughs) It end in marriage. It's over once you get married. I meant to say it begins. <laughs> it begins in marriage. Um, he said that uh, Amber said that she agrees to what she, he says, and she says, you know, once you find your soulmate, everything else can like fall in line. So there goes that soulmate. He go, he gonna get voted off. These girls want a ring, bro. <laughs> These women want to be married. They are in their forties or like right at forty or approaching it. They're ready to get married, settle down, and be serious. But yeah. she said she's a, she Get agrees. Get that audition for the next housewife. So. <laughs> Maybe she's just agreeing because she don't want to be like, I want to be married today. You know, yeah, she don't want to give off That's the why they're on the show. Yeah, she's like, oh, okay, I agree. We don't have to do that. And as soon as th- 90 days pass, she come out with the Steve Harvey book, Think Like a Man. Yeah. <laughs> well, Steve Harvey says that we need to be having some standards and some requirements. Yeah, he's like, I just wanted a life partner. <laughs> Right. Same thing. <laughs> Put a ring on it. Beyonce. Exactly. Let's move on to the next scene. Next scene shows Ron at the dance studio to teach salsa dancing to the t- to the group. And he arrives first and he's just like doing his little salsa dancing thing. But those two feet the was looking, toe. They were looking like Michael Ja White <laughs> pigeon toe dancing to salsa. Why these feet look like two left feet to me? <laughs> He did it so strong. He was on. Wait, I was like, those feet was like hitting like this. I was like, like, okay, what's happening here? Anyways, so the group comes in. He's actually their instructor for this uh, dance. (laughs) So (laughs) dancing. They gonna tear some stuff up in that (laughs) restaurant. Knock over some chairs. (laughs) So one, two, three, (laughs) boom. The group dances together and then Ron splits them up into pairs to practice. Joelle and Vernicia go into one room, uh, Tressa and Deidre go into another, and then Ron and Chrysanthemum stay together in, a, in another room. So Joe, uh, you know, is saying that he really feels a connection with Vernicia, which you can tell they kind of hit it off from day one when they first met that he, they've kind of been like latched on. That's just what I've been noticing. Um, And she also says that she really likes him, too. Like, they just have an organic, you know, chemistry. It doesn't feel forced. Meanwhile, in another room, Chrysanthemum is directly asking Ron, like, so who's your number one? (laughs) Talking about tops and stuff. Apparently, somebody else is your number one. Or is or was. I'm looking for a partner. Can you be that? Exactly. Can you be that? That's the question. You see that in me, so... I see signs of it, but it's consistent, consistent in it, do it. Okay. 
I think her saying I gotta be number one in this was a selfish move. It was kind of not about me. They go straight into arguing. And I'm like, this is giving me toxic energy vibes before you even can enter a relationship. Like, he's like, well, she's like, all right, Ron. All right, Ron. Like, he's trying to get his sentence yeah, like, out. You, you the one that asked, <laughs> I'm supposed to lie because I'm talking to you so y'all can kick me out of here like Troy? Like, no, you're not number one. I'm sorry. Well, I don't do number two. <laughs> All right, well, this attitude, you not even number two no more. He's like, can you be that? I'm yeah. looking for a relationship. Can you be that? I'm like, yo, did ting, anybody hear that? Ting, ting, ting. She just <laughs> dropping two. <laughs> Three. With all the Four. attitude. And I don't want to dance no more. I I, I don't want to do this no more. Right. <laughs> I'm glad you showed me this side of it. Like, you want to be a number one, but this is how you acting to be number one? Like, you can't... Stacy? <laughs> was it Stacy? It was Alexis he liked. No, not Alexis. I'm talking about the one oh, that right? came to his house oh. and said you got a pick. <laughs> you hey, yeah. Stacy back up? Yeah. <laughs> yo. Remember what I said about... Like, you, you, and, you and the kids want to go to Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> Chrysanthemum over here acting a chrysanthemum. <laughs> what? Chrysanthemum. Crazy. I'm done. Oh, yeah, chrysanthemum got some attitude on her, huh? She's a piece of work. Why when I say her name, I want a croissant I don't know. Her, I think I think of, I think it's a flower chrysanthemum. Oh, yeah. Is that a, a flower or is it something? I don't know, but I'm hungry. Is it like, uh, what is that thing, potpourri? I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't it's a it. flower. It is a flower. So I, I was think right. so. So just yeah. leave it at yeah, that. Just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say potpourri? <laughs> like, is that, that's not a flower. That's what it's giving. But don't they mash them up like, and dry them out? Potpourri? Right. But that's not a type of flower. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Hey, can you go to the store and get some of the potpourri flowers on and dry them out? <laughs> Make my own potpourri at home. <laughs> Some chrysanthemums. <laughs> Diedrich and Tressa go out for a date. Tressa shows up to the spice store. They talk about different spices. He even goes into some weird reason as to why you shouldn't use imitation vanilla. I'm not going down that road with him. And that imitation vanilla and a beaver's sack or something like that. I don't know. It was something very strange and I, I didn't want to receive it. <laughs> so Derek says, or Diedrich, I'm sorry. Diedrich says that um, even though that they're at this store and they're vibing and having conversation, he, she just still feels like the homie to him. Like Tressa can't get out of the friend zone for him. Um, Tressa tells uh, Derek that men usually would like to just sleep with voluptuous women and not really make relationships with them. And his response to her was like, listen, when a man wants you, you'll know. No. And there's no question behind it. And so she's like, you know what? He's right because I can honestly get the vibe that he's not trying to lick spices off my arm. So, <laughs> so he's clearly just trying to be the homie. So, and she's okay with that. And that's what happened in that scene. Oh. I mean, that's kind of what everybody's been given, Tressa. That same friend, homie, no attraction, kind of whatever vibe. But she makes it. That way, you think? I don't know. I don't know if she makes it that way. She always makes it about her weight. She like so, bring that up. I thought yeah, that too. Yeah, so in that like moment. you never get a chance to just connect on the person. Yeah. I don't want to say you're trying to look over that, but like yeah. when it's there yeah. and you're talking about it, like yeah. then I don't get a chance to look past it, I guess. I agree. Because I feel like, you know what? When I was watching the show and like, you know, doing the notes and stuff, I was thinking to myself, why is she bringing up the fact that she's voluptuous and all that? Like, let like him, all the time. Yeah, she does make she does make that part of her conversation. Maybe it's a defense mechanism. Like she tried to talk about it first before you could talk about it. You know, like I when, get that. when you're in school and you try to make a joke about something that you know the kids are going to talk about you. <laughs> I didn't go through this. I'm just saying. Why you got to give me the side eye, though? You know what I mean, though. I, I Yes, I agree. But the fact you gave me the side eye, like I was a... I still think she just got to let it go. Because he's actually trying. Like, he fought to have her there. He did. He did. And so he was trying to make a move yeah, to see if but, there was something there, but there's right. just nothing. He, yeah. he got nothing. We got nothing. We moving on to the next scene. You heard me? <laughs> Everyone is arriving to the masquerade ball. 
Um, the first, this is the first time everybody has been together as a group since the brunch when uh, Troy was walking around telling everybody they, they were his number one. <laughs> you my number one. And, and Ida got voted off. That was the last time they were all together as a group. Okay, okay. <laughs> It was nice to meet you. No, it wasn't. That's why I'm not here no more. <laughs> like, you asked them. Like, yeah. they was feeling on no, my I ass. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know you did. Did you hear what she was like? They was the one feeling on my ass the day before, and I yeah. just don't understand. I'm thinking, like, why did you let them, though? Like, why it was okay when you thought you were going to move forward. To the next round. Like, y'all go ahead and touch on me. <laughs> oh, y'all going to vote me <laughs> off? Get your hands off me. <laughs> and why you touch me like that? Like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Y'all got cameras, right? Y'all saw I was that not. That was her exact energy. That was in episode three. Yeah. I was like, yo, this chick is wild. Yeah, like, they could, I don't know why I'm getting out of it. Right. This is why they didn't want to connect. Crazy, see crazy, old <laughs> box body. <laughs> anyway, so I'm moving on. Body shape like, <laughs> SpongeBob. I'm sorry. Alexis came in dressed like she was the bride for a wedding at this masquerade party. She says her dress is supposed to be a symbol of where she wants to go. <clears throat> Thirsty. And to keep <laughs> the brand of Alexis Fly alive. Because, you know, they call her Alexis Fly because she's supposed to be so fly and how she dresses so fly. Okay, Alexis. Um, You're still here on the show trying to find somebody. <laughs> right, so I don't know how. Fly. <laughs> somebody <laughs> flew away from me. <laughs> so, so the next person to show up is Liz. And Liz was coming. Like, she was coming to kill them. She was like, don't let the church go girl fool you. She killed them, slayed them down. She said she felt like the bell of the ball. Um, well, she looked like an upside down red bell. <laughs> Shoulders all the way out here. She's not gonna sit here and talk to me in this camera view, and your dress is outside the case, just a head on top of all this red. Yeah, I'm killing him today. Yes, yes, girl. Everybody in the heat. <laughs> Tommy shows up to welcome everybody, and he did call her out. He was like, Don't let the past see you. Look at that. To call Liz out for that. But I thought it was funny. So he, Tommy introduces his wife. Like he brings her into the ball saying he got, you know, everybody got somebody. He want his wife here too. So uh, she comes in. Tommy tells the group to take their mask off figuratively. Like, you know, show them your true self and who you are during this time. <laughs> so everyone can get to know each other. Don't do that. Next scene shows Stacy asking Ron, um, did, Cons did Chrysanthia move up to number one yet? So oh, she's like to, trying to do the work, beloved, for her friend. Yeah. <laughs> she came in with the Iyanla. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to fix this life here. <laughs> I can't do this with all these ratings all the time. No, you're still the same place you was last time. Leave me alone. She's like trying to like shoot for her friend. So he was like, he was really getting annoyed with her trying to do that. So, um... They move on, and then Stacy and Chrysanthemum are being shown at, like, a little table, and they're over there talking about how they're freaking frack, and everyone, like, the guys are feeling like they can't really get to know one or the other because they're always together, and even when you talk to one or the other, they're either, like, mentioning that the other's name or they're included somehow in conversation, so... I think we all been there. They just... <laughs> what does that mean? Like, we... Trying to talk to a girl, but she always got that friend around. Yeah, that's always yeah. there. So you just like. I understand y'all think it's cute. Yeah. So they have like a annoying. codependency on each other. Uh, I don't like her. I like yeah, you. Yeah. And I'm starting to not like you because of her. I know. Next shows Jason and Liz. They kind of dip off to the side to have their own little conversation. He asked, do you think I could be a match for you? And Liz was like, that's a good question. She was like, well. Spiritually, I'm attracted to you. You know, that is an attractive uh, characteristic. Is that a characteristic? <laughs> it's, it's a feature. <laughs> <laughs> I got features. I come with this feature and this feature. You can upgrade me to the working feature. That's going to cost you more every month. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And then Jason tells her, like, he is, uh, Liz is one of his top picks. <sighs> yeah. And that's what happens in those few scenes uh, at the ball. I wonder if these girls are in it for the dude, or not or in for it the overall. Notoriety. But I mean, do they get caught up? Because I know how I am. Mm -hmm. Once 
Once you start putting first, second, and third out there. Oh, yeah. Am I am I really competing for the the female? Right. Or am I competing for that rank for to that the female? Spot, yeah. Because it's it's a big difference. And Ron made mention of that he, and with the when they were at, you know salsa dancing yeah. with those feet. He was like, you know, Chrysanthemum is making it seem like it's a game. Like this is yeah. not a game. He's really looking to be with somebody. You know what I mean? Right. And that answers the question right there. Yeah, because it's Kinda. it's two totally different. Yeah. If I'm looking to get the ranking, if I want to be number one, mm-hmm. I'm a I'm gonna put up with more from you than I normally wouldn't, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna be a little bit of someone I may not normally be. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm gonna go for things like, oh yeah, yeah, let's do this. Or, yeah, right. like I'm performing. It's right. not real. Right. If I'm really trying to go out. I don't know. No, you're right. right. You're right. Because once the camera shut down, now it's no longer like I. I won. Yeah, and it's over. Like I'm not gonna be doing this. And let me let me put out my stand. Let me get my think like a woman, but act like a man, or think like a man, (laughs) act like a woman book, and start telling you all my standards and requirements and what I ain't gonna do. Yeah. So you're right. You're absolutely right. So anyways. Because I want to win. I don't care about the girl at that point. I just want to be somebody number one. (laughs) Next scene shows Chrysanthemum talking to Ron, and then Ron sees Alexis dressed as the bride walking into the room, and he like automatically dips off to go yeah. speak to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> Alexis drink like too fancy. Uh, I was talking to, of course, Ron. I need to come in for the real thing. Uh huh. I see you kind of trying to run over there and talk to your little number one. Go on over there. I see you want to run over there. Chrysanthemum over here like, go on and talk to your little number one. I know you want to talk to her. I see you. It's like, Chrysanthemum, you need to bring it down like a little bit. Like, no? Yeah. It, it's... Her energy is, it's funny to me, but also annoying in the same time. Like, you can't be like this. You got to like, this is what you signed up for. You know it was going to be a competition. That's thing. the problem. She can be just like that. <laughs> And she probably is just like that. I know. So, and then he go for Alexis. Not know the basketball players like, bro, <laughs> the bro. Coach. You seeing they got Jason. stylists and makeup artists before she get on camera, bro. I seen her drop her son off this <laughs> practice. That ain't what she look like. This ain't what you want. No, that, just kidding. She don't look like that on regular. <laughs> just kidding. That's why he don't want her. No. Nah. So as Ron's going, I can feel uh, Chrysanthemum's eyes on the back of my head just like, I see you walking over there, and that exactly what she was doing. He was feeling fire, but it went from my eyes. <laughs> so then um, Alexis reveals that her and Ron has been talking every day, and they have built a connection, but she is also feeling AJ. Um, Alexis does ask Ron though um, about his connection with Stacy, and Alexis says Stacy put out this vibe that her and Ron have a really strong connection. Um, and so she asked Ron, like, do you, you know, think Stacy is interested in you for the right reasons? And he's like, you know, I don't know. If she's genuine, it'll show. If not, it'll just continue to be surface level like it is now. And I don't know why, but Alexis thought like that was like some low level shade, and she just got her little chuckle off of that. And that's what happened in that scene. I don't know. You know, that's the it's thing about this. It's the worst of people. And that's what I was just about to say. Everybody's hunky-dory at first. Oh, yeah. Everybody frat, as soon as you freaking frat, this and once that. You, once <laughs> you share that eye contact with somebody and you thought it was something that it made, ooh, people feel it's going to get hurt it then. It is. It is. Let's move you on. Hear me? Let's move on to the last few scenes of this episode. The guys show up at the gentlemen's lounge to deliberate about the ladies. They talk about how they had a good time at the masquerade ball, how everyone was dressed to the nines. Tommy talks about how everyone, you know, is feeling this week and or actually who everyone is feeling this week. My bad. And the, the guys go into talking about uh, AJ said he's feeling Kyra. Chris said he's feeling Amber. No, you know, no surprise. David is feeling Liz. Joel is feeling Bernicia, and Ron says his number one is Alexis, which we knew. Yeah. <laughs> um, then Tommy asks, so who are y'all not feeling? AJ, Ron, and David all say they pick Stacy. They're not feeling yeah. her. She's just, there's no connection there. She's not, they don't feel genuine, a genuine vibe from her. Uh, David also chooses Tressa because he says there's no connection. 
AJ says he feels the same. He's never really had no connection at all with her or attraction. And then Diedrich says that he feels like flirting is forced. With yeah, her. like and he forced himself to flirt with her and still didn't feel nothing. Yeah. yeah, so she really didn't make it either. Tommy tells the men that they need to sit down, make their final decisions to cut two ladies, and then they will go out and have, I guess they choose amongst themselves who's going to go out and have the conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, he does tell them that next week the women do have the power to eliminate, so just keep that in mind too. And that was the end of that scene. You can tell they all look stressed out like they didn't yeah. want to have to do this. In the last few scenes, David meets with Stacy and Joelle meets with Tressa. David meets with Stacy for dinner and reveals that he was very interested in her in the beginning. Um, when they had their Pilates day, he just felt like she wasn't trying to connect with him, like she was ducking and dodging, you know, the vibe. And so he said he took that same energy into deliberation that, you know, there wasn't a connection there. And him and the guys made the decision that she is not ready to love. When he said that, she was like, well, I feel bamboozled. <laughs> like, and then the tears started and then I started to cry because I cry at every show, though, because I... <laughs> The look you just gave me. I did. I hate to see why y'all signed me up to watch the show knowing that people be crying in the end. Like, I can't take to see somebody cry on TV because I ball. I cry all the time. So when she started to cry and I felt sad for her. Like, dang, this is rough. I know you don't care. But, you know, I just. Dang, you don't date a person. <laughs> like, y'all ain't, been, so you ain't been together with somebody for years and I now know. they're breaking up. I know. Like, I, I didn't sad. like what I did she drop said. A tear. I didn't like the reason for her being upset. Because she felt she felt cheated. Like she felt like everybody wasn't upfront and giving. You no. Know, what? When she was like, didn't she say, I, my kids wanted me to. Oh, yeah. She did say that in her interview. Yeah, like my kids. Her kids were going to be disappointed because she put herself out there to, you know, get find a, a man. to Get, get them, them a father. like To take to the pet store to get the two dogs. Yeah. Like. <laughs> she was creating a whole fantasy in her mind. About that wasn't for the out. kids. That was you. The last scene shows Joelle and Tressa. Um, and Joelle tells Tressa that most of the brothers says that she is a queen, but they just are not the king for her. And uh, she deserves to have a king is what she he says, I believe, actually. And um, But they decide that she is just not ready to love. And she was like, it is what it is. <laughs> drink she did you know what I mean? and then i think it hit home and she started to cry yeah. and then i cried again and i was oh, like oh God. why do these people got me watching the show with everybody bawling in the end and making me cry so i felt sad for her but we kind of see it coming she dodged it like the final destination movie in the last you know <laughs> That was somebody. She they, skipped. They she, not gonna let her get skipped. kicked off the first week. You know how many? I know. And then I'm, she and then she didn't make it. The, you know, in the second deliberation from the guy. So we are you know, I know. But that was the end of episode five. What do you guys think of this Ready to Love episode? Drop your comments in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you. This is a very interest, interesting show and how they kind of set this up. I think mm. I think it's going to be interesting. I mean, it'll be cool. I just need to get to know them a little more yeah. so that I can make fun of who they are as people. <laughs> Be so I superficial. Think, I think I gotta get used to the show because I've never really watched this before. Right. So it's like it's not like Married at First Sight that I've been watching this even before I started to do a yeah. review for it. So I'm very fresh to this. So I gotta get used to it. But and as she so gets more used to it, she'll tell me about it, and then I'll. Get and then more he'll used get it. it. Yeah. So I just <laughs> no, I get, get it. it. I mean, it I get it. I just I couldn't go back and watch all four episodes up to this one. I know. I, I watched entirety. them. And they're tired. Yeah, I, I watched them, and, and I thought they were pretty interesting, but I, I had to do the homework. I had to do the work, beloved, in order to understand. What <laughs> Draft is on, beloved. Oh, I'm sorry, but My I had Cowboys to Cowboys is trying to get better, beloved. Also, be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button to support our channel. We also have a 5,000 subscriber giveaway happening right now. So go ahead 
and watch that video and find out how to enter to win. The winner will be announced on Monday, May 3rd. So be sure you uh, put your entry in. Also, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next Saturday for another episode of Ready to Love with Couples Couch. Bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs>